find the tackle brands you trust most at Dick's Sporting Goods or Dick's.com. From September through December, from North Carolina all the way up to Maine, stripers, bluefish, and other game fish begin their southerly migration. Stripers and bluefish are going to follow the bait fish, such as bunker, mullet, rain bait, and other varieties. Baitfish, stripers, and bluefish are literally close to and sometimes on the shore or in the suds of waves along the coastlines and shorelines of beaches. It's at this time that surf fishing can be one of the most exciting ways to fish. And if you've ever seen a blitz, that's when stripers are in a feeding frenzy, you have the potential of catching one fish after another and an outing that you will never forget. This video is intended for the beginning surf angler to teach them about the gear to get started and the techniques. The good thing is, you don't need much. Surf fishing is all about casting. The further you can cast, the more ground that you can cover. A 9 to 11 foot rod with a spinning reel is a good way to get started. Something like this marathon rod and reel combo is an inexpensive way to get in the game. Spool the spinning reel with 20 to 30 pound braided line. We like braid because it's lightweight, thin, and it cuts through the air, which will extend your casting distance. Here's the slow motion look of the surf casting technique. Another important piece of equipment are chest waders. This allows you to walk into the surf and again increase your casting distance. Now of course, you can fish without them from shore, but this allows you to catch and release the fish in the water unharmed. Always remember never to wade beyond your waist level and remember to wear a weight belt. This will stop the water if you do get swamped for filling up your waders and weighing you down. Never fish alone and always stay within your comfort zone. Now lure selection depends on what baits around. The problem is we don't always know what's out there. You'll need a surf bag and a small assortment of lures such as tins or these diamond jigs to cast distance or into the wind, bucktails to work the bottom water column, soft baits to work the mid water column, Daiwa SP minnows to work the mid water column to the upper and of course, if you see them on the surface, poppers work every time. Look for points along the beach, such as this one that we're fishing, but also look at that one down there. Make it a good practice for walk from point from point and make a few casts in between. If you don't see the fish on the surface, you're going to have to do some prospecting. Work the bottom, mid, and top water columns. When using bait, bunker, clams, and live eels are an excellent choice. We recommend using an inline circle hook because it's less damage on the fish. Grab yourself a couple fish finder rigs and a sand spike and you're good to go. Keep an eye out for birds. Flocks of seagulls diving into the water can only mean one thing, the presence of bait. And where there's bait, there's predators. A good pair of binoculars is an excellent tool for locating flocks of birds diving. If you actually see surface activity under the birds, it's a sure sign of stripers, blues, or both. Access to most beaches are public with ample parking to allow you to walk from the parking lot to the surf line. But if you have a 4x4 vehicle, consider getting a beach permit and drive into the beach. The great thing about surf fishing is that you can really catch that trophy fish. You just never know. It's easy and inexpensive to get started and just about anybody can do it. Remember to get some local knowledge, stay safe out there, great fishing and tight lines.